Welcome to the Loveland Trials, the world's toughest electric car test. And today we're taking that vehicle, the electric smart car, up the mountain to the top of Loveland Pass, which from here in Boulder to the summit is 75 miles. But there's a problem. Let me have Tommy explain. This 2015 Smart Electric Drive has an EPA range rating of 68 miles, which is kind of a problem, so we're gonna need a solution. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something unique. We're gonna drive the smart car up as far as we can to the top of Loveland Pass, and when it's about to run out of juice, we're gonna turn it around, and we're gonna point it back down the mountain and see how much power it regens until it runs out. So we'll see if indeed it can go 68, but the range might be less, or it might be more than 68 miles, and there's really only one way to find out, and that's to put Tommy behind the wheel of the Smart and me behind the wheel of the Land Rover, and then when it runs out of juice, we'll load up the car and we'll take it back here to Boulder, but we'll have an answer for you. All right, Tommy, how far do you think you'll get in the Smart car? Will it do more or less than 68 miles? What a good question. I think that it will do more than 68 miles. All right, so let's give it the best shot we can of having it go as far as possible. So that means uh, no air conditioning, no heater, you know, no, no heavy dad. The other question I have for you is an easy one. Why don't we just fast charge this like we have done in the past? That's a great question because we fast charged the Mini and the Eagle. And the answer to that is uh, this car doesn't, doesn't have fast charging actually. It just has level one and level two charging, which means that given three or four hours, we could get a decent charge, but I don't think we want to wait at the charger for three or four hours on level two. I do have a short stint of driving here in the city before we hit interstate. And let me tell you what, this car is amazing in the city. You know, it's funny, at the office we have a bunch of really expensive and high-end press cars from Mercedes to BMW to Lexus, but no. Everybody wants to drive the $7,000 electric smart car because it is so much fun. It really is like the cross between a golf cart and a go-kart. You kind of sit like you do in a golf cart, but it's fast and zippy and nimble like a go-kart. The smart car is a little bit unusual in that I don't have any eco modes. All you get is a little bar here in the dash that tells you how ecologically you're driving. So basically, the higher the eco score, the smoother and more efficient you're driving. So I'm gonna to wanna to keep that eco score way up. It's at 85% right now, which is pretty darn good, but there's no like uh, special green mode or anything in the smart car. And I actually have two little gauges up here in the center of the dash. One is my state of charge battery percentage gauge, and then the gauge on the right is a power percentage gauge. And that basically shows me how much throttle I'm using. And then this car has pretty aggressive regen, three modes of regen. I'm in the highest regen setting which you adjust with the paddle shifter so basically when I let off the throttle it goes to a stop pretty quickly it's actually very impressive for a 2015 car 68 miles of EPA rated range doesn't sound like a lot but I think you'll find for everyday driving it's plenty for most I challenge you to start paying attention to your daily commutes and your daily driving habits you normally drive over 60 or so miles because I certainly don't and the nice thing is with the smart every night you go home you plug it in and in the morning you have a full charge so it really isn't a concern for most city driving at least I find we stopped at this gas station right before we hit the interstate for some snacks so I'm taking on some serious weight dad yeah you are how, how much do you think one of these uh, weighs you think it ounces. Adds? Where are you? What are you at? Well, we're doing pretty good actually. We're well on track to meet the EPA rated range or perhaps beat the EPA rated range. The estimated range remaining is 51 miles. We've driven 25 miles. And if you look up here, state of charge, 65%. That's going to dip pretty qu pretty quickly here though, Dad. Yeah, I'm just helping you uh, eat by eating these chips. I don't want you to, you know, fail. Chips. Sorry. Uh, the question, of course, is when you get down to what, 20% it cuts power? Yeah, somewhere around 20% it'll cut power. 
and then around 10% it's gonna turn into a snail. Yeah, and that's gonna get dangerous on the freeway. So mm -hmm. I'll just follow you and whenever you feel like it's getting a little too dangerous to be on the freeway, let's pull over and let's turn around and see what you gain going back down the mountain. Okay. All right, let's do it. Mm. Mm. The first 25 miles have gone very well. The next 50, not so well because it's straight up on I-70 to the top of Loveland Pass from here on out. Now some specs about this car, the battery capacity, 17.6 kilowatt hours. That's extremely small. To put that in perspective, the Tesla Model S or X is like 100 kilowatt hours. And of that 17.6, only about 16.7 are actually usable because they leave a little buffer so you don't brick the battery if you run it completely empty, like we very well might today. Here comes a huge drain of power, I can just feel it. 65 miles per hour and plenty of throttle to spare if I needed to pass someone. The surprising thing is, is as small as this car is, as short as the wheelbase is, it's very stable on the highway. So it's zippy in the city, but extremely stable on the highway, which is extremely surprising. And I think part of that is because of this car's German roots. Of course, Smart Car is owned by Mercedes-Benz. Uh, this one was built in France, funny enough, but it's designed for German roads. And Germans like to drive quickly when they have to. And trust me, it is very stable at speed. So here's the status update. We are coming into a tunnel before Idaho Springs, Colorado. We are approaching like 9,000 feet above sea level, pretty high. You can see there, we've gone 43 miles, average 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, but our charge percentage, we are sitting at just 30% battery remaining. Uh, this car is gonna start to derate itself on power, and you can see there's three little bars there. That tells me the available power output. So eventually we'll go to two, and then to one, and then we'll be really crawling along when we hit uh, one bar of power. How you doing, Tommy? That's not good, 24% uh, battery remaining. All right, so, so here's the issue, Tommy. Uh, you gotta get back up that hill, right? Uh, and I'm worried that there won't be enough, actually, to regen to get you back up the hill before you can go back down to Golden. Yeah, I'm worried about that, too. How we do this? Uh, we're stuck in traffic anyway. Uh, and there's an exit coming up. Why don't we uh, turn around here, and that way you'll have enough power to go back up the hill, or if you don't have enough power to go up the hill, we could also just go down the canyon. Yeah, both of those are good potentials. What I'm worried about is we're entering a work zone here, and if we run out, we could clog up traffic badly because there's nowhere we could load up here. Good point! I never even thought about that. You're right, look, there is no shoulder here. We have just lost our shoulder. Now, you're probably thinking, ah, it's gonna be all downhill, and yes, it, it is a net downhill, however, in order to go down, we do have to go up, if that makes sense. So we've got long sweeping downs on the interstate and then super steep straight up for a short distance and then long sweeping downs. And I'm still a little worried we're not actually gonna make it back to a safe place to load this thing up because it goes super steep, uh, but short uphills are definitely gonna tax the little smart car. We're only at 21% battery, not great. All right, well, you make the call. I mean, if you feel like you're not going to be able to make it back up the hill, I really don't want to be loading this thing on a trailer on the side of the interstate. So the other option is you can hang a left and go down the canyon. Yeah, but if it dies in the canyon, then you're definitely not going to load it up. Yeah, there are pullovers uh, and trailheads at the canyon uh, if worse comes to worse, but you're right, there are parts where it would be tricky. Okay, Tommy, this is where you got to decide, canyon or up the hill. I think we're going to do canyon. We haven't really put any power back into the battery. We haven't used any, but we haven't put any back in, so I'm right at 20%. Okay, canyon it is. Good call. Uh, I will follow you. Let me know when you get to the point where we need to pull over and maybe load it up. So here we've got our secondary canyon road, US 6. 
and this bypasses the highway. It's kind of cheating if I'm being honest. And basically what the highway does is it goes straight up for a few miles and then gently down and straight up for a few miles and then gently down. You can see one right there, that hill, where the canyon just kind of is a gentle rolling down the whole way. We are at 20% battery remaining, so we're doing well and you're probably saying you're being a wuss, but I really don't want this thing cutting power on, a, on an interstate. So we're gonna, we're gonna take the smaller canyon back road. So far we are 55.5 miles we have driven so far, which is pretty good. All right, so check this out. High voltage battery at reserve. We got a little warning there. We just hit 20%, but you can still have, still have three little bars next to that KW, which means it'll still allow me 100% throttle. So it's not derating itself yet, that's good to see, but that might start happening. I also have it on high region, that's what that little plus next to the D means. All right, Tommy, we made it back to Golden. How many miles of range you got left? The car says 16 miles of range remaining, and it said that about 16 miles ago, so the little range computer isn't great. I'm just going off the battery percentage. So what's the battery percentage? About 15% remaining. Yeah, I, I don't think we're gonna make it back to Boulder. Uh, <laughs> but we can try going as far as the little guy will take us, see what uh, see what miles we end up getting. I'm still curious, What what's your total mileage now? 70.4 miles driven. Wow, so we've blown past the 68, that's pretty good. Check it out, I hit 100% on the Eco score. I've never seen that. I didn't even know that was possible. Woohoo! And finally, look at this. I got a light, low battery. Under 10% remaining. Oh, now look at that. I lost a kilowatt uh, little light there, so now I only have 66% of my throttle. The limit is to 66% throttle. Oh my, how much, uh, what percentage of energy are you at now? About 9% remaining, so we're, we're, we're getting low. Uh, so we have two choices here. Uh, we could keep going straight, in which case, you know, we're going to be kind of stuck on the side of a pretty busy road. Or once we go up and over this hill, uh, we could turn right uh, at the bottom and there's a neighborhood there. So we could keep going kind of on a side road until you run out. So we're not necessarily on the busy road. Uh, that might be a smarter way to do it. Yeah, we'll do it that way. I'm about 6% now. I see you're turning into the neighborhood, Tommy. Are you almost out of power? Yeah, it's reading maybe 3% battery. What, is it like splashing or saying anything? Life is low battery, but it's just cruising along. Well, let's have enough battery to actually roll it out of the trailer. <laughs> so let's find a downhill. We'll park the trailer so that uh, it's a little bit easier to load and uh, call it uh, done. How many miles, dude? 78.2, so I'm gonna turn around and maybe we can use that big hill. All right, Tommy, were you sweaty? Were you nervous? No, because you got the trailer, right? Yeah, not at all. And it still has more to give. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, it's at 1% battery right now. I, I don't want to get completely stranded where it says no, uh, and then we can't get it on the trailer. Well, you know, you, you, you can push it up there. Uh, it, it also has a function where it runs completely out. It'll yeah. let you drive into a parking spot. Yeah. But I don't know if it'll give you enough torque to actually drive up on the trailer. Yeah, I think um, we've proved that 80 miles of range is well beyond what the EPA says, which is 68. Yep. Uh, and I think we've proved that um, it's a fun little city car. Uh, that if you had it taken the mountains you could but just just don't drive more than 79.2 miles yeah let's load it up there uh, make sure that we can get it back to the office Tommy I, I think there's no two ways about it the smart car definitely failed with a capital F the Loveland trials but then again you know we could have charged it up in um, Idaho Springs where we turned around. There is a level two charger there. 
uh, at Bojo's, which is a great Colorado pizza restaurant. The problem is it doesn't fast charge, so we would have to have both lunch and dinner, because it's six hours, really, <laughs> and then continue the journey, so. I think, ultimately, around the city, 68 miles is plenty, right? Or yep. in this case, 80. Yep. Realistically, it's underrated, I think. I mean, we consistently get well above 68 miles, as we did today. If this car, when new, had like 130 miles of range and they could have sold it for 25,000, they would have sold a bajillion of them. Because the rest of the car is great. Yeah, but look, we paid 7,000 for a city car, uh, which has all the comforts of every other car. I think that's fine. As always, this is Roman. And Tommy, head over to tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in uh, Tweety Bird reviews. Yeah, and let's, uh, I'm really dying to put it on the charger. And people may be wondering why we didn't completely run out of juice. It's never good to do that. And no. plus then we have to push it into the garage and it's, you know, 1% is fine. Uh, drink car, drink, drink. 15.7 amps. How long does the sale take to charge fully? Six and a half hours to full. 